developments in the world of boxing with uh, Jake Paul and Logan Paul, they've kind of turned themselves into the quasi celebrity um, boxing body, right? They're kind of doing their own thing. I think they might have each done it on different platforms. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, what's his name? Jake did his on Fan Mino, Fan Gogo, or something like that, mm -hmm. and Logan did his on Trilla, right? Trilla, Trilla, have you pronounced that name? The app that's sort of like the dancing thing is similar to TikTok, but they've sort of turned themselves into like the go-to people for these celebrity boxing matches, right? Where they sort of call out celebrities, people you know within their sort of like world, or they go and call out you know actual fighters to come and fight them in the boxing ring. That's the sort of next evolution you're seeing now going forward. And of course you had it confirmed with Logan Paul going to fight Floyd Mayweather in the exhibition fight, which is insane. Just to think about it, right? You know, again, just to think about it clearly like, you know, Logan Paul, a YouTuber who's boxed for what the best part of two and a half years, maybe um, is going to fight one of the best boxers of his generation. Maybe, you know, of all time in his weight class, a guy that's 50 and 0 um in the boxing ring it's really really odd to think about that but again you know if you look a bit behind the curtain you'd see a lot of boxing aficionados and fans would say although there's a lot of talent in boxing and it's probably at the highest level in terms of overall talent there is the way it's run the mechanisms behind it the individual promotions um you know the padding of records the dodgy commissions the judging all this sort of stuff is really not helping boxing to maintain its sort of a law and appeal to the general consumer and unfortunately the general consumer seems to be the person that actually decides what goes and what doesn't i think that's what the ufc has done really well like they have the ufc probably has one of the best one of the best and worst fan bases right they have the best fan base in terms of there's such a varying levels of experience and knowledge in the fan base right you've got actual people that you know partake in martial arts on the side and watch ufc so they're very knowledgeable you've got people who fight on their local circuit who watch the ufc so they're very knowledgeable and you've got people like myself who are like casual fans who watch the odd card here on most weekends if they're on i watch the odd card i don't follow each individual fighter but i'm very keen to kind of learn as i'm watching and then you've got of course the hardcore fans who've watched ufc since the beginning so i think it's it gives itself um a chance to compete with the basketballs and the you know and the american footballs in the u.s just because it kind of appeals to such a wide catchment of people and i'm sure there's definitely been some um they've definitely been able to attract some um some you know some ex boxing fans who have sort of been a bit disillusioned with the sport and jumped onto something else and um i think because I think for me personally, when, when boxing turned off for me was maybe Manny Pacquiao versus Floyd, May Floyd Mayweather, right? That fight didn't get made for ages. And then when they finally did get made, they were both old and it wasn't what it could be. So that kind of was an illustration of just how much the infrastructure of boxing behind the scenes doesn't help the overall sport evolve and continue. Anyways, fast forward to now, these two YouTubers, um, Logan Paul and Jake Paul, of course, the Paul brothers, uh, you know, synonymous for some very viral moments on YouTube, have now turned their attention to creating these one-off special occasions, moments in history, moments in culture, I'd guess, where they essentially press pause, uh, you know, around whatever everyone's doing around the world, and they kind of suck you into these, um, you know, uh, quasi bouts that they do with, you know, again, washed up celebrities or people that actually fight for real. And it looks like Jake Paul has decided to call out Conor McGregor. Um, now, I'm sure the Conor McGregor call out is um, pre preferably in a boxing ring, because I think if there was any opportunity that he would um, call out uh conor mcgregor and octagon it'll be lights out for him i'd legitimately be afraid for his um you know for his life in that regard but if you're calling him out in a boxing ring of course it makes sense cause, considering what they've done previously but it's such an insane call out i think just in terms of the level of skill of course right if we if you're telling me logan paul's a better boxer out of the two and he doesn't look that great you know when you put him next to an actual boxer and then you're telling me that somehow jake paul has a chance to beat conor mcgregor i don't know what you've been smoking mate but this is a video where um jake sort of calls out conor in a very uh jake paul sort of way and again i don't i don't really know what he's trying to achieve with this but it's just a bizarre state of affairs of boxing now at the moment what the fuck is up you irish cunt 
Good morning, Conor McGregor. I know you're probably beating up old dudes in a bar right now, or maybe you're jacking off because you're sick of fucking your wife. I mean, Jesus before, Christ. You could do a lot better, but happy Monday. Jesus My team sent Christ. you a $50 million offer this morning. $50 million cash, proof of funds, the biggest fight offer you've ever been offered, but you're scared to fight me, Conor. You're ducking me because you don't want to lose to a fucking YouTuber. You're 0-1 as a boxer. I'm 2-0 and as a boxer. I just came off the eighth biggest pay-per-view event in history, but you want to fight Dustin Prober, who has less followers on Instagram than my fucking dog. That's a fact. And Dana White, you're a fucking pussy too, you ugly fucking bald bitch. You said there's 0% chance of this fight happening, but there's 0% chance of you getting some fucking pussy. Connor, you're scared. Dana, you're scared. Sign the fucking contract, you idiots. Jesus fucking Christ. Irish bitch. So yeah, that was a call out, right? Um, if you're Connor, what do you do with that sort of information? The ego in you would obviously want to go and, you know, pull up to his house and obviously, you know, cave his head in. But it's obviously not the wise decision to, it's not just one of the wise things to do, especially considering, you know, the current um, cases over Connor's head and, you know, the, the scraps he's gone into in public and just his general um, wild boy antics outside the octagon. But in terms of a fight, like, does this really make any sense whatsoever for either party? I know 50 million is a lot of money, but again, is all money good money? Are you just always going to be dictate? Are your, all your movements going to be di dictated um, by who can provide you the bag? I don't necessarily think that's how you create like a lasting legacy. Um, you know, a legacy that sort of, um, you know, see sees the test of time and all that. Is that me making sense here, test of time? I don't think that's how you do it. I honestly don't. Um, but again, let's entertain the idea. Again, if they get into a boxing ring, I think Connor will win. If they get into an octagon, I think Connor will win. That's not really something scary or out there to say. But either these guys have balls of steel or they know something we don't. Because I think part of you, when you're, even if you're not that experienced, regardless, right, who you're fighting, you see with, you know, T.I. and Flipping Floyd when they got into a little scrap of a tiny, right? I think T.I. was jealous of floyd having a friendship or relationship with his wife in some respects and they got into some sort of passa passa and i remember people online were saying like why the hell would ti be challenging floyd over it's like it doesn't matter when you're a man in it when someone challenges you or you feel as if you need to stand up for yourself it doesn't matter what the guy is or what they do you're gonna do it and you're gonna die on your sword so there is an element to that with these guys where they're like i'm sure there is right where even though they're calling out two of the most storied experienced fighters in the world people who are at the top top of their game um there is a part of them that generally does think that they can win because i remember i think i definitely heard logan paul say he said yeah it's a fight in it i've got a punch of chance to win right they generally think that that's, that's an opportunity so that's a scary part i think of it because again like i said i went to one group on class right to do muay thai and the appreciation i got for martial arts and the respects that i have for combat sports went up infinitely right and that was just a crappy group on class in the middle of a yoga gym somewhere right and i was like wow i don't know how to fight at all and if somebody had even just a couple of months experience more than me hell even a couple of days more experience they would kick my ass all the way back to sunday like easily so i can only imagine what the difference must be between somebody that's been boxing seriously for a couple of years and somebody who's dedicated their entire adulthood to fighting in a cage at the highest level like it's just not even fair in it and i'm sure connor as well has got a bit of boxing experience i remember listening or reading somewhere that he had he was like a golden glove champion again what that means nowadays because everyone's a golden gloves champion or has some sort of golden gloves experience but still he's full on a amateur level to some extent boxing as well prior to him coming into the ufc and as well he's not even like his it's not like you're fighting uh it's not like he's fighting it's i think it'd be different if he was fighting like a uh who's a good idea like a wrestler type in the ufc in boxing right because they don't necessarily have good striking like a grappler right but connor's a striker he's known for having good hands he's known for kicking people really well in the head so to suggest that that is a good idea for somebody, again, that's got less... Because, you know, we saw the gap between Connor and Floyd Mayweather, right? The first four rounds, I think, were decent, right? Connor landed that uppercut everyone keeps talking about. Floyd would tell you he didn't want to... He was purposely being easy on Connor because he wanted to make a next spectacle. But I get the feeling that it was a close fight in the beginning. I think he earned his respect in the first four rounds. And then, you know, Connor gassed as he always does in the UFC. 
and then Floyd Mayweather being the pro that he is took advantage of it and just sort of like turned you know um put his foot down on the accelerator and just completely steamrolled Connor for the most part and finished the fight I think in the fifth or sixth or something right so we know that can happen to someone like a Connor at his level now Connor's got what since that fight has it been three years maybe more so and supposedly everyone in his camp again it's hard to listen to coaches because they're always going to ride for their guy but everyone in his camp is saying that he's much better than he was prior so he's got so he was at, he was decent enough to give floyd a good fight for four rounds now he's got three and he still lost right convincingly now he's got three years experience and he's put on a bit of size and you want to fight him i don't know man these guys are mad, isn't it? But again, I, I respect the I respect the flipping um, balls of steel they have. And then I guess the next video we have here is of um, Jake Paul deciding to throw some water balloons at Dylan Dennis as he's doing quite funnily enough the um, food truck diaries. To me, it looks like a bit of a st it looks like they set it up. It looks like one of those kind of YouTube pranks, right? Um, especially when you consider that Brendan Schaub is friends with Logan Paul, then it makes complete sense that they kind of want to do this. But either way, they're really cranking up the pressure this their, his team. They're really trying to push this fight forward and make this a thing. The Dylan Dennis thing may make a bit more sense for Jake because I guess he's a traditional, what, he's a jiu-jitsu guy, right? He's not known for his striking, so that might make more of sense in terms of getting him in the ring, but still, somebody that's been fighting professionally at that level, I still f I I'm still going to put them my mind in a professional. I don't know why it is, but maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not. Let's watch the video of Jake Paul throwing the war balloons at Dylan Dennis. Conor McGregor's friend Dylan pick up truck. Dennis, Dennis, you gotta check in when you come to LA. And he had this video attached to it. Hey, look, it's Conor McGregor's right there. <laughs> like, it stops right as they're a bit talking. He shouts like slur and he throws water plumes at them. It's quite funny. See? gonna go ahead and replay the so again i don't know man what do you think do you give uh jake paul any chance uh of defeating conor mcgregor do you think he's got a chance of even defeating dylan dennis i would love to know in the comments down below i don't necessarily give him any chip chance but hey you never know stranger things have happened